this talk uh, will be about uh, uh, the infrastructure to run uh, your, your applications that you are building, guys. And um, first, about myself, I am uh, now uh, an engineering manager at uh, Twisto, and um, uh, I also uh, do some DevOps consulting on a side because I don't work uh, full time uh, at Twisto. And uh, before I studied uh, chemistry, I co founded a machine learning startup that still exists. And if you have uh, any questions, uh, just uh, hit me up on uh, Twitter or, or uh, just write me an email. So uh, this talk uh, will be uh, mostly for uh, software as a service companies so that are growing. Uh, I will be uh, showing uh, how we did uh, at uh, Twisto, uh, how we did uh, the infrastructure choices, and uh, in the end, I will, sh I will share uh, some uh, practical tips uh, on uh, how to work uh, with uh, bare metal servers or how to combine uh, stuff if you want to go the same route as, as we did. So uh, when you are making an online service, um, most of the developers um, focus on uh, the shiny things, on the software uh, or on the user experience, but uh, there is a lot of uh, hidden uh, infrastructure and the supporting uh, stuff, like uh, the diamond cannot be in the void. Uh, you need uh, uh, some servers uh, for, for your, your software and uh, these servers need to be in some data center. And uh, um, like uh, when you are choosing a place to display your diamond, uh, the infrastructure has um, a big impact on how people perceive your service and uh, how easy it will be for you to, to develop it. So uh, also you have a lot of choices um, you can make uh, when, when you're thinking about uh, deploying uh, your service. So uh, we have established that you will need uh, some computers. When you are building software, you will need computers. Uh, but where to get them? What is the best place? Uh, one option is um, platform as a service. Um, for example, Heroku. This is my favorite one. Um, it's uh, uh, there, there are many alternatives. Uh, AWS uh, has uh, something that, uh, that tries to come close. Uh, it's called Elastic Beanstalk. But um, all of these uh, services aim to um, make it easy for a software developer to um, display uh, their software uh, on, a, on a public site. So uh, it's uh, usually some integration with uh, development tooling. For example, with Heroku, you just uh, push to a Git server and uh, Heroku does all the magic uh, with, um, uh, with uh, installing dependencies, building and uh, redeploying uh, the application with a minimally uh, disruptive manner. Uh, there is a similar thing uh, with uh, Elastic Beanstalk there is a command line utility, uh, EB, EB, and you just run EB deploy, and um, it's all integrated uh, to the service. So if you are starting up, it's definitely, I would definitely recommend uh, not, uh, uh, unless you have a, a requirement, uh, I would definitely not recommend setting up your servers, your virtual machines, just uh, use uh, Heroku or whatever. Uh, and it will save you uh, quite a lot of time uh, in the beginning, and it's not that costly. Um, but later, uh, like a year, year later or two years later, you may find out that uh, you have uh, more specialized requirements or uh, that um, you need uh, more power and it starts becoming costly. So you may think about uh, other options. So what are the other options for running your service? Well, you could go shopping. You could go shopping for a server. Um, I would not really recommend it. Uh, there is uh, a lot of things to know about the servers. Uh, there is uh, the, the trips to the data center uh, with the server to set it up. And it's it's usually not worth it. If you, if you go this route, as I've seen some companies I work for, uh, just uh, always I uh, use uh, the server housing and uh, at least don't try to build your own uh, data center. It's, it's really not worth it. Um, you could rent uh, virtual machines in the cloud or 
uh, you could use um, more sophisticated uh, services. If you uh, rent uh, pure virtual machines, uh, they may become uh, quite uh, costly uh, compared to uh, to running your own servers. Uh, you are paying several times as much. And uh, if you are using uh, the services with uh, higher uh, value added, like the load balancers and so on, they are not as costly, but still um, uh, when uh, when you uh, combine these services, there is a lot of the system that lives in these interactions. And you will need people uh, who understand uh, the strengths and weaknesses of these services and how to combine uh, all of it together. So, uh, for example, this screenshot is uh, taken from uh, Amazon's uh, uh, blog post on uh, uh, recommended architectures to run uh, WordPress. And um, it uh, it's not really uh, something that uh, you would, uh, as as a developer, uh, you would uh, start doing um, out of the blue. Um, there are a lot of things to uh, to think about. So, uh, if you are in the cloud, either uh, you use um, virtual machines that are uh, overpriced, or uh, you use uh, these uh, other services, but you need to to understand them, and uh, there is uh, a hidden complexity. Um, there is a, a way uh, to uh, rent uh, dedicated servers, uh, physical hardware provided uh, by several companies. Uh, either it's, uh, for example, Hetzner, uh, a big one, or there are uh, multiple uh, local data centers, like in Prague, there are at least uh, four or five which, which have uh, reasonable offers um, in, in this. And um, uh, the, uh, you don't get uh, as many services. Although uh, with the small companies, uh, you can usually negotiate, uh, for example, uh, load balancing as a service, but uh, you get uh, really uh, the best um, um, the best price uh, for the raw power, and uh, you can you can build a really lot uh, on top of uh, service like this. So these are the options, and um, now I'll be talking about uh, what we did with uh, Twisto. So first, what is Twisto? Twisto is a fintech uh, company. Uh, it's around uh, already uh, since uh, 2013. Uh, we issue MasterCards. We uh, we are in two countries, uh, Czech Republic and Poland. We have integration with uh, Apple Pay, uh, Android Pay, um, and uh, we are moving uh, around a uh, serious amount of uh, money uh, of, of our customers. So uh, how did the infrastructure uh, look like uh, in Twister case? So in the beginning, this uh, seven or eight years uh, ago, uh, there was a cheap hosting. Yeah, something uh, just to, to get it, uh, get a service uh, up, up and running. No customers then, uh, no worries about data basically. Uh, since then, uh, the, the company moved to a dedicated server and um, quite soon after that, uh, it added a backup server. Uh, in the beginning, as I say, there is a lot of business risks that mean that the company can go out of business uh, even if the IT goes, if if the IT doesn't do any any errors. So the company prioritizes uh, to minimize the business risks by uh, spending the engineer's time on uh, actually improving the product and. Uh, uh, iterating the business quickly. So, yeah, we could uh, have uh, lost uh, several days uh, um, of, uh, uh, of uptime uh, if the server had failed, or um, we could uh, we could have lost uh, some data, uh, but uh, it was it was a risk. Um, and uh, this risk uh, is not as big as, as you may think. Uh, the servers are quite reliable. And uh, there are many factors out of the IT which uh, which make this this risk uh, look uh, okay. Um, later, uh, we started to scale up uh, the platform and uh, you know, split the application server and the database server. Um, and uh, from the single application server, we created a Kubernetes cluster, uh, mostly uh, to prevent uh, waking us up uh, during the night when there needs to be some maintenance done or uh, when uh, um, 
where some part of the hardware uh, fails. So uh, this this cluster works uh, quite quite well, and uh, we are now uh, working on a live replication of database uh, to be able to um, do uh, maintenance um, on uh, during working hours and not having to to take the the full system uh, offline. Uh, as we as we do uh, when when we need to to do some upgrades, and uh, during all of this time we have uh, cloud backups. We use the cloud for durability, and we also use cloud for uh, scaling up and down when we need it. So we have uh, many staging and testing environments uh, for the developers um, on demand uh, in cloud. Uh, we use uh, Amazon, and uh, it's great to use it uh, for. Um, or things where we don't want to predict uh, the, the the need uh, how how many how many testing environments will we need uh, in in a month or two, um, and uh, where we are built just uh, by the minute or by the second, um, it's it's very easy for for the developers, and uh, we don't just want to reinvent the tooling. But for the production, we are very happy with uh, the uh, on-premise service. Every decision has a cost. So, uh, what what does what does this cost us? Uh, for a long time, only a few engineers uh, could um, deploy a new version of the application. We were deploying uh, daily or uh, every few days, but uh, it always relied on um, one of a very small group of, of engineers because the deployment um, essentially required uh, admin access uh, to the uh, to the server. There was a script based on a tool named uh, Fabric which uh, um, logged into the server, check, checked out uh, the latest uh, Git revision uh, from uh, which has been tested by CI and then did uh, the database migrations, uh, restarted some services and so on. Um, now we have a better tooling uh, which, uh, which automates deploys, but uh, because we had a quite simple infrastructure, uh, we had to live with this uh, for, for quite some time. We had also uh, a few outages, which could have been prevented if we ran on some setup with multiple availability zones. But it was only like three times uh, during the, these last uh, seven years. Um, and uh, we had uh, way more problems, uh, which we introduced in the application code, than uh, the outages uh, caused uh, by the data center or by, by uh, the infrastructure. Um, on the other hand, uh, there are some benefits which we gain by this choice. The development is easier. Basically, in the beginning, it was the same environment. Uh, if you used Ubuntu on uh, your uh, development machine, um, you uh, you were pretty much uh, um, you had pretty much the same uh, environment in in production. So uh, it was quite easy to test. Uh, uh, Test what what would happen if we change something. Uh, we have uh, faster CPUs than than are available in the in the cloud. Uh, we have lots of uh, RAM, uh, so uh, we don't have to do some optimizations um, as soon as uh, we we have had to do it. We were paying uh, more for this, and uh, the overall architecture of the application uh, in the beginning was was really simple. And also, uh, because the dedicated servers are cheaper for the raw power, uh, we we are saving like two or maybe three uh, engineer salaries. And uh, these uh, 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 these engineer salaries don't go only to the uh, infrastructure maintenance, but uh, also to the uh, creation of uh, developers tooling. So we have uh, tools like uh, one-click uh, staging environments, uh, things like uh, um, snapshots of the database in a few seconds, anonymization of the database, um, so we don't risk as much uh, losing the data, and uh, many, many other things. Um, so what is the resolution of the question, of the old question, uh, if it's better to, to run uh, software on-premise or in the cloud? We think it's actually an outdated question. Uh, we are happy uh, mixing um, this together. We have uh, dedicated servers for production. We have uh, cloud VMs for supporting services and uh, for uh, stuff where, where we need uh, 
higher availability, like uh, card transaction authorizations. Uh, we are mixing it with uh, software as a service. And in my opinion, this is uh, how you avoid uh, vendor lock-in uh, to be able to actually uh, think about these services or these parts of your stack uh, individually and uh, say that, for example, now um, Firebase uh, doesn't uh, suit us very well. So we are looking uh, how to replace Firebase, not to look how to replace the entire uh, Google Cloud setup. So now for something completely different. I promised you some tips. So when you actually decide to go this route and um, use uh, bare metal servers, the first tip, I think the most important one, I will say I, I learned uh, by practice is that there is a technology called K KVM. It's not the Linux one. It's, uh, uh, it stands for keyboard uh, video mouse and uh, it's basically remote access. So um, if your server supports this, uh, you can, um, you can uh, configure BIOS remotely if you need to. You can install your operating system and um, you save a lot of calls uh, with the support people uh, from the data center and you save uh, trips uh, to the data center. Just be sure it's uh, integrated on the motherboard. Uh, some cheap servers uh, don't have it. And uh, the Ata Chapel KVM is not, not as good. Um, and uh, the brand, brand servers uh, license it separately. So just talk to your uh, data center if they if they support it before before entering the server. Uh, the other tip is um, to get used uh, to disks filling up much faster uh, than you expect. Buy more disks in advance and be sure to have uh, free slots for the disks in the servers. Um, it's quite easy to, to extend the disks if you use uh, LVM in Linux, which stands for Logical uh, Volume Manager and uh, you just uh, add new disks and um, the software uh, like the database which is running on top of them uh, doesn't see uh, anything uh, only that, that there is more free space so um, just be ready uh, for this that you will be need you you will need to to add add some more storage um, the third tip is that uh, virtualization like uh, virtual machines or even containers can really wait until you have uh, multiple uh, teams that need to somehow share um, share these uh, these servers, and um, we were quite happy with with the monolith. Um, with even in the Kubernetes, we, we the the application is still based uh, on the monolith, and um, we can deploy it uh, ten times a day uh, without downtime. And um, this this is something which uh, which uh, really works for us. So if you introduce a new uh, technology like uh, virtual machines on your bare metal servers, uh, or uh, if you split uh, your stack to uh, microservices, just uh, be sure uh, what you get uh, as a benefit. We obviously use uh, virtual machines in the cloud, but uh, we don't use them at all um, on our bare metal servers. Um, fourth tip, uh, if you uh, manage like three or more uh, servers, it's time to start looking at uh, unattended uh, installation, which means you write a short script that contains uh, server name, IP addresses, and so on. Uh, what, pa what packages you need to install, probably some SSH keys. Uh, and uh, uh, then you boot uh, with uh, boot from an installation uh, ISO image, uh, which contains uh, this script and uh, the server installs all by itself. You don't want to spend time waiting for uh, servers booting up and installing them, especially if you need to do it several times. Uh, there is uh, Red Hat uh, Kickstart, which does it. Uh, Debian has uh, Preseed, or it can be uh, scripted uh, with, with a plain script. It's not that hard and um, uh, the Debian Preseed is not as good as the uh, Red Hat tooling. If you would uh, run more than like 20 servers, there is uh, uh, services to have a look at, uh, which uh, allow you uh, manage these, these servers. There's Foreman, Ubuntu has uh, Metal as a service, but I 
don't have uh, personal experience with them so far. Um, so uh, before we move to the questions, uh, there is a last tip. Uh, if you like what we what we do, if you like what you see, if you would like to be a part of um, uh, the company uh, that um, uh, simplifies payment, moves real money, but uh, uses uh, bleeding edge technology and uh, runs in Python, then uh, hit me up and uh, we are we are hiring uh, both uh, DevOps people and uh, developers. So thank you for your attention. And now it's time for answering some questions. Uh, just one came in. Uh, do you have entry-level positions open for DevOps? Uh, for DevOps, I think uh, we currently don't have an entry-level position, uh, but for, for development, uh, we have. But uh, definitely, definitely hit me up. Uh, just uh, uh, I'll, be, I'll be happy to have a call with you. Uh, and uh, I think uh, we can figure something.